For those of you that make excuses and say, Oh, it's so hard to make it in the music industry. Or anybody who tries to help out musicians and goes, Musicians are just all broke. Well, I I'm here to prove all you fuckers wrong. You gotta get with him. Like, there's no one else. He's the fucking goat. In this video, what I'm gonna tell you is the full breakdown story of how I was able to go from broke as a joke, and I'm talking about barely making $2,000 a month and $25,000 in credit card debt while being married, to now building a music business that's got a six-figure run rate, that means making over $10,000 a month. The way I tell the story, though, is through a client testimonial that I did with my mentor, Jeremy Pogue. Now, Jeremy Pogue has completely changed my life. I spent over $15,000 this year alone on business coaching before I found Jeremy, and no knock to those guys, but none of it really worked out for me and none of it really seemed to be what I really truly needed to get to that next place, not just in my business, but in my life. And I finally found the, I don't say the best mentor, because Jeremy is not the best mentor. He's the only mentor. At this point in my life, I've worked with lots of coaches and bought lots of courses and read lots of books. And I have to say, when it comes to coaches that coach other coaches, I, I hate that whole corny uh, phrase and saying, and he probably does too, but when it comes to people who mentor people that have coaching businesses, there's lots of players out there, and in my opinion, there's only one, and it's Jeremy Pogue at Summit Acquisitions. So, I'm super pumped, because I didn't wanna just make this a regular client testimonial that we did over Zoom. I wanted to come present this introduction to you, because I needed to give you context as to, as to how special what Jeremy has done for me is, and also give you a little context as to the actual story. So, without further ado, I wanna share with you the interview that I did with Jeremy Pogue on his YouTube channel, where I talk about my entire story from going from completely broke to now having a six-figure music business. So, thanks so much for watching, hope you enjoy. Welcome to Channel Lee. Today we're going to be talking about his journey from going from basically like one to two K a month to what did you do about 16.5 K this past month and yep. what less than two months working together. So uh, yes, something like that. Yeah. It, it's blown me away. I must say that your growth has just been incredible to, to watch. And I'm very grateful to be a part of that too. And apologies if my, my voice isn't quite all there. We just got back from uh, Cancun and Tulum with the, uh, <laughs> the client retreat couple days ago and we're all feeling a little beat up we uh, we worked way too hard so um nonetheless it was awesome to meet you in person man and uh have a ton of fun together and this mastermind and brainstorm and uh pop some bottles of champagne together on a yacht so um that said lee why don't you give us a quick little rundown quick little background who you are what you do what the business is and then we'll take it from there yeah for sure well thanks for having me man i really appreciate it this is uh crazy vision for me to be on one of your client interviews like this is insane uh yeah so yeah my name is lee lipfin leezy the gifted so i'm a rapper and a music producer and i teach independent hip-hop artists with full-time jobs how to become their own music producers so how to make beats record vocals at home and mix and master that's my offer and it's pretty much what i do love it man um why don't we kind of take things back to like kind of two, three months ago. So I know yeah. I'll, I'll kind of like set the stage a little bit. And then I, I just want to hear it from you. Um, yeah. Because I think we, like we originally had a sales call and <laughs> like, I, I don't know, man, I just saw a lot of potential in you. And like, mm -hmm. I know like you, you couldn't join the program at the time. So I just kind of like gave you some free sauce. I was like, bro, just do yeah. this, this, and this. And then like, let me know how it goes. So I can use it as like a case study. And then you literally just took and ran with it, man. And then I know we did a couple uh, kind of one-off calls as well here and there as you were signing clients, making some money and stuff like that. And then uh, eventually got to the point where you're able to join the program and, uh, and go from there. So what was that like for you? And uh, what were kind of like the main problems, the main kind of things you were facing before? And then, uh, yeah, take it from there. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and like, the timeline's really interesting. Like I'll definitely yeah, clear that up too. Like, so we got on a sales call. I had watched your YouTube videos because, you know, I was doing like, dude, before I had met you, uh, before I even found your YouTube channel, I had spent over $15,000 just this year in between September 22 to September, to this September 23, 15 K before you and I ever linked up on coaches for business coaching to try to grow this music Academy. And 
yeah, I definitely learned something from all of them, but there was a reason I went to so many different people. It was like, dude, I could never just get the fucking formula down. <clears throat> um, and one day I just searched how to get, how to book appointments for coaches or something like that on YouTube. And you, you weren't even the top rank. You were like maybe two or three videos. I was like, okay, this guy looks pretty cool. I'll check him out. And I checked you out and I was like, cool, I'm gonna keep diving into his YouTube. And then I was like, okay, this guy's pretty legit. I think two videos deep booked a call and started DMing you after I booked a call. I was just like, yo, just want to let you know I booked a call, but I also wanted to connect with you here. And then we just started DMing and I was like, hey, like, love that you did 75 hard. I've done that many times. Like, I really respect you did that. And one night I was on my second workout. I was walking like literally down the street and I was just like, bro, I want to get on a call right now. Like our calls for Monday and it was a Friday and I was like, I need to get on with you now. You're like, huh. okay, let's do it. And I was so ready and like, I had no clue what the price was going to be. But anyway, got on with you. We didn't work out. We were both kind of disappointed. Fuck. Like, okay. And you were like, you know what? Can we just turn this into a coaching call? I was like, yeah. And you told me about the VSL framework, how that works. You told me about how the ad works, like everything. And I literally just did what you said on that call. <laughs> and I, I landed my first 3K piff off that like little free 45 minutes that was supposed to be a sales call. Okay. And... For context, I was already paying another coach 1K a month. So when that happened, I canceled him because I was like, that guy's not doing anything for me. This this good looking blonde guy from fucking Canada gave me free sauce <laughs> and got me a 3K piff. So got the 3K piff and immediately I just said, maybe I can't pay for the guy's program, but maybe he'll do like a little coaching call with me. I don't know, which you don't do anymore. I was like, bro, I need an hour of your time. I need it. I don't even think you thought of offering it. I just was like begging you. I was like, give me an hour, yeah. bro. I just got a piff. I need more of this. And I did two more of those and ended up getting like that month I made over 7K. And I that was I was making 500 to 1500 a month before I met you, okay? Cold organic DMs, whatever. And then Ooh. off some free shit, I made 3K. And then off a little, couple of little calls, I did 7K in a month. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's been like, I think it's been around like since I've officially enrolled in the program. Yeah. It's only been two months, but I think, I think when we started doing those coaching calls, it's been about four months. Yeah. Um, but they were like unofficial little coaching calls that you don't even offer anymore. So yeah. So that's kind of the timeline. Um, what else do you want to know? <laughs> I just want to say, man. Yeah. I, I don't know what it was that I saw on you. It was just your, your drive, your hunger and, uh, just your potential as well. And that's, that's why I did it. And I remember thinking at the time, like, man, like I shouldn't really do this. Cause like I got a whole bunch of other stuff on the go. And like, I don't want to like set the precedent that like, I just do this all the time. Right. Mm. Um, but, uh, boy, am I glad we did. And thank you. I remember about a month and a half ago. So mm. it was mid August. So you're in the program at this point. And I'm, I, I'll actually say this too. When you joined the program officially, that put me over. That put me, that literally helped me hit my first 100K month cash. Fuck yes. Huge. And uh, yeah, so thank you for that. That was crazy. Oh yeah. Um, but uh, I remember you set a goal for yourself. And mm. this is back when we were kind of planning the client retreat and, in Mexico. And I know that like, well, I'll, I'll just kind of shut up and stop talking, but kind of you tell us, like, tell me what was going on in your head at the time and what was the goal that you set for yourself and kind of like, what were, what were the thoughts that were going on inside your brain at the time? Yeah. I, I, so first two weeks of August were really dry for me. Um, and I was like, damn, I really like, this is tough. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I knew everything you were teaching was going to work. I just hadn't got it. So two weeks were really dry. And that's when the retreat kind of came up. And yeah, I actually remember you holding a Zoom call for everybody in in Summit. And you were like, hey, let's do just like a quick Zoom call to discuss this Mexico retreat. I had 500 bucks in my bank account, nothing in the savings. And I got on that call and it felt like a fraud. And I felt like sad. And everyone was talking, like, I think Alex might've been there, like Selna was there and, you know, Selna's a baller, right? 
So, and you're just like, dude, I just feel like balling out. And I'm sitting here going, I got fucking 500 in my account. I don't even know if I can make this trip. But I forced myself to go on that call and said, Lee, it, it was just something that said, put, put, just put yourself there anyway. And you'll, I don't know how to explain it. I think you know what I'm trying to say. Put yourself there and you'll get yourself there. Yeah. So I said, you know what? I'm, I talked to Irwin who's in our group. And I said, man, I really want to get 10K in the next six weeks before I go to uh, Mexico. And Irwin's like, fuck it, why not 20? And I said, all right, cool. Like right when Irwin said it, it just clicked. I said, you're right. And uh, once I set the goal, I was like writing it in my journal, like road to 20K, blah, blah, blah. And then I told you one day in Slack, I was like, man, I'm really like starting to feel just super nervous and scared and frustrated. And like, I'm just getting a lot of anxiety. And you said, yeah, it's because you, you set this short-term goal and you're going to steal away from future Lee and let it go basically, right? Let the goal go. Um, don't worry about it. And then we got on a coaching call with the group and I asked, and you said the thing that probably has been the biggest key to my success. And I feel like the final key inputs over outcomes. And I'm like, fucking tattoo that in my brain <laughs> i literally want to get a tattoo of it damn near like inputs over outcomes bro because i ended up hitting my goal of 20k in six weeks because i let it all go <laughs> and yeah so from august 13th to september 26th i hit 20,000 in that total time and in the month of september just in those four weeks i did 16 500 which was a fucking like wow in August, I did fifty-seven fifty, and then September, I did I almost more than tripled my business in a month, <laughs> and literally, it's because of this one thing that Jeremy Pogue said one time: inputs over outcomes. So, thank you for that lesson. That's amazing, man. Yeah, really, really proud of you. Really happy. Thank you for you as well. And yeah, I know. <clears throat> just kind of elaborate on that a little bit. Like when you say you were like anxious and kind of like nervous about hit like about not hitting the goal basically i think kind of what i said was like well that's because you're putting the goal on the pedestal so it seems like it's far out of touch so another thing as well is like we can't really control the outcomes we can't control the outputs but what we can control directly is our inputs and this principle served me extremely well too because when i like set a goal i'm like yeah, i'm gonna hit this by this date and all that like if it doesn't happen, then we beat ourselves up. But what we can do is we have control over our inputs. And as long as we just do the things we need to do every single day, that's all, that's all we can hope for, right? That's, that's all we can do. And then with that as well, we're detached from the outcome, which is kind of backwards. It's, it's a crazy paradox because it actually attracts the outcome that we want a lot better when we are detached from getting it. So um, yeah, that's wild, man. But, uh, and I know just last week as well, while we we're at the villa on the beach by the pool, sipping some coconuts, got a little payment come through as well. Yes. That was awesome. That was awesome. That was, that was great because that was like on September 30th. So I got, I got to kind of put it into the September. So I was at 15, 500, then that came to make it 16. And I was like, mm -hmm. fuck yeah, cool. Like, <laughs> I was hung over as fuck drinking a coconut in the pool, trying to just like come back to life. And I look at my phone. I'm like, Oh, cool. <laughs> like another, another one K like coming through yeah. while I'm like, Jeremy Pogue is on my left. I'm in the pool. I got a coconut and my head's pumping. It just goes <laughs> to show like this kind of business model with the right people, you and everybody, mm -hmm. what can, uh, what can be accomplished? Speaking about people, let's talk about that a little bit. So okay, you've been such an incredible part of the community and I want to commend you for that. I want to say thank you because just the energy you bring to the community, it just, it's so inspirational and motivating and just, it lifts everybody else up. It's kind of like that proverb or that quote, it's like a rising tide lifts all boats. It's like, mm. I can very clearly see that like inside the community, you are part of the reason why that tide is lifting. And wow. I think it's pretty clear to see <laughs> that ties lifting pretty damn quickly too. <laughs> yeah. Um, Thank you. But talk to me a little bit about like the community. What's been that, uh, what's that been like for you? Um, I know you've made some incredible connections as well. And like how much of an impact has that had on your success too? Well, I'll tell you, but I, I will, it's better if I show you. 
first how great this community is i mean look at these look at this group of guys here like this is ridiculous <laughs> like you can't get a better group um yeah i have this on my desk this is like an incredible picture but this community man like bro it's yeah it's hard to put into words um well, let me start before the essay, the before the retreat, because I do want to give a shout out to Erwin really badly. Like Erwin Kronk in the community, he's he's been really honestly pretty big for me. We've been big for each other. So like, he helped me reformulate who I was targeting, and we sat and he rescripted my ad with me line by line, which you have done that for me as well. But it just needed a little bit more, right? It just needed a little bit more. Uh, yeah. And since then, Erwin's literally been like. We just fucking like, you know, we send WhatsApp messages that are like 30, 40 minutes back and forth to each other. Like no bullshit. Uh, every day. <laughs> it's crazy. So get just want to give him a shout out. Um, but the community too, like once I got to Mexico, so like land, see everybody, we get on the shuttle and it's like 15 minutes into it. And I'm like, my mind already exploded. Sitting next to Chase, talking to Eduardo. Selma Kim, <laughs> he comes on, not disappoints, full suited and booted with like velvet red shoes. What's oh, yeah. up, boys? <laughs> like, <laughs> and just the vibe and the energy is super high. I think um, when I was there in person, one thing I was noticing, bro, like I kept saying this to everybody. I said the eye contact, super different, especially you uh, with your freaking piercing blue eyes. Like when you talk to people, bro, you're like listening. I'm like, damn, he's really listening. He doesn't think he's better than anybody. He doesn't act like he's this big, you know, big baller who's cool. No, like you're listening. You're dialed into every combo and you respond. You're honest, you're empathetic. And then everyone else is just like that. You know, my roommate was Eduardo, who was a peak performance coach. Just so happens, by the way, we're both fully Jewish. I don't know if you knew that. And... <laughs> I didn't know that till we found out in the room. The first night we stayed up till 3.30, just talking on the first night, Wednesday night. And every night we stayed up till like two or three, just talking. And that's like one of my best friends, Nick Drivis. I called him today. I called him yesterday. We talked for an hour each day. It's one of my best friends. Erwin's mm -hmm. one of my best friends. These are people, and I'm like, Nick is going to come fly out here to California. Like I already, we're already talking about him coming in November to stay in my house here. Wow. And I'm like, bro, I need to go see these dudes. Me, Mike Kaz, he's going to San Diego in March and Nick J is there. I'm going out there in San Diego. I'm going to film music videos with Nick and I'm going to kick it with Mike. I miss you guys already. I'm like trying to go back out and see everybody. Um, I want to go to Atlanta to see Tom, you know? So just the love I got for everybody, the love they have for me. It's crazy. The motivation everyone gives me. It's like, damn, you know, Nathaniel came out a day early to San Francisco. He had a stop in San Fran. I was like, bro, I'll come swoop you up. We'll kick it for the day. We kicked it the day before we both uh, came to Mexico. Mm -hmm. You know, he's one of my best friends. And it's just like these connections I made, it just raised my standards for who I want to be around. And it raised my made me raise my standards for myself too. And mm -hmm. it also made me, yeah, I'm going off a lot, but like another thing too is like I'd never been in a room with that many people where I actually believe in everybody. I'm pretty judgmental. I think a lot of entrepreneurs secretly are very judgmental on people because we don't like negativity, right? So yeah. do you believe in the person you're talking to? Are they on the right path? Do you think they work hard? And are they a good person? I don't I, like, it's hard to have the, all those check boxes. And I was literally in a house with 20 people for the weekend where everyone checked every box. It's like, Whoa, like that's made me realize the type of people I want to be around. So yeah, the community in and of itself is worth it's priceless. What really stood out to me too was just exactly like what you said. Every single person there checked every single box and that's very, very hard to come by. And it, it's crazy to me. Like I, I'm so humbled literally every single day when like you see the winds channel just popping off in Slack. Like 
that's just going nuts. Like it's crazy. I've never seen one like that, but like just the, the caliber of the people that are joining the community and that are members of it. And like, it, it blows me away. It humbles me so much. And like, I, I'm kind of honestly like speechless because like you guys are just incredible. And like, it wasn't, it, it doesn't seem kind of like what you said. It's like, it seemed like we we're just like friends, like actual homies just hanging out, having so much fun. And everyone was just on the same wavelength and it was, it was just incredible. And uh, another thing that was pretty crazy too, is like, that was, that was one fifth or 20% of all of my clients. Like that's crazy. That, and that, that's just like a small sample, but to think that we were able to get everybody together, like that many people and just went so smoothly, like it was pretty cool. Um, but uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's kind of paint a bit of a picture for, for what's next. I know while we were down there, we're, we're always like, we don't want to leave. And then we also want to plan another trip. And yeah. um, I, shit, I got to start saving up for that. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I, I think that we need to start doing this pretty regularly because that was like the first one and just the, the in-person energy was just so different. Right. And that's something that you don't really get through zoom calls. Like to yeah. some degree, like you build a connection with people, but like just that in-person energy is just next level. Um, but in terms of you and your business, like what's next for you, Lee? Well, you know, I, I yeah, that's a good question. Um, it's weird because like I'm so used to setting, you know, these number goals, and I want to keep setting those number goals more for fun, mm. uh, because I enjoy the game and I love the game of business. At the end of the day, dude, if I'm making eight to ten k a month, I can pay my bills. So like I love how you say that. You're kind of I think you use even a lower number. You're like, dude, if I'm doing 5K this month, I can pay my bills. And I love that because it takes a lot of pressure off and it makes the game fun. You know, yeah. it's like, you know, you sit down and play Monopoly with your fucking family. If you don't win, it's not that big a deal. Chill the fuck out. So yeah, I think for me, uh, but I do want to attack my goals too. So for me, I'm trying to hit 100K a month next year. And I'm going to be honest with you, bro. And I really wanted to share this like, the four hour work week laptop lifestyle never appealed to me ever. I never want to work four hours a week because this shit ain't work to me. So like I do music and I fucking love music. If I could just wake up and come sit and make music all day, that's what I would do. And I'm kind of like, that's my life right now. So why wouldn't I want to just keep doing more of that? And uh, I want to make the number one music production academy in the world. So that's not a 30, 40, 50 K a month thing. And like I have like really big like things I want to do. And it's like, it's just not a hundred K a month thing anyways. So for me, I want to get to a hundred K a month next year. I went from 500 a month to 16,000 a month in a year. So I'm talking about 16 to hundred. It's not even the same. Like it's a less big jump than what I've already done. So yeah, yeah I want to, I want to get to a hundred K a month. And I also want to finally just blow up my artist career. Like I want to get a million streams on a song. I want to get a million monthly listeners. I want to, blow that up and show people it's possible. Um, I want to do my own retreat with my friends, like a music retreat, like how we just did SA. I want to pay for yeah. an Airbnb with my friends and just make music. I've had that on my list for a while. Um, Want to buy a house, want to buy a car, Porsche Macan, Miami blue. That's the color. I want to do that. Uh, shit. I uh, would love to come out to Kelowna and fucking go on a hike with you. That'd be fucking lit, but I got to earn it. So I know, I know once I get to hundred K a month, I'll be able to do it. So that's a big goal for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's <clears throat> kind of what I see happening next. Love it, man. Love it. Yeah. I think from my experience, like zero to one is a lot harder than one to 10. Mm. Right. And what I mean by that is like getting to like, get into like five to 10 K a month is like, the hardest part but getting from 10 to 100 honestly pretty straightforward it just takes a little bit of time and as long as you just stay detached keep doing the inputs that are required to get there keep making smart decisions keeping your focus narrowed it's inevitable right it's absolutely inevitable because and and this might be a good segue too to something else i want to touch on um which is like your niche your offer it's yeah, like yeah 
super like weird and unique, which totally. is amazing. So a, it's like, it's kind of, it poses some challenges because there's nobody else to really model or to get inspiration yeah. from, but it's also a good thing because it's a complete blue ocean as long as you position it properly. So I know kind of the biggest thing at the start was really figure out the messaging. Cause like, as you know, it's like, bro, ads are the easy part. Anybody can make an ad. Like my dog can go make an ad and record it and launch it. But that doesn't mean it's going to be really, really profitable. Right. Um, yeah. What was kind of like the biggest thing, biggest takeaway, biggest insight, revelation, lesson that you learned when kind of going through that process of dialing the messaging? Like what was that that big change for you where it really just, just clicked? Mm -hmm. Yeah, great question. Well, what's coming to mind is some some of the homies who are like not quite at the 10k mark and I really want to like spit something for them if they if you know yeah. hopefully it gives them value. Well, cuz I've talked to them, right? Like we all chop it up and I've realized how much our beliefs and limiting beliefs get into this stuff. Like it's weird cuz we all are pretty much masters of personal development, but then some people still say, "Oh, my niche is this, my niche is that." It's like that's the same thing as an I am statement. You know what I'm saying? So if anyone's niche is broke, it's mine. Uh, I hate to be that guy because everyone says that, but it's like, bro, fucking musicians and rappers, come on, like try to find a broker niche than that, right? <laughs> uh, so um, the, the the thing with me, so the interesting story, this is like a fun business story. So I had, so I'm on my seventh ad currently. This is, so seven. So everyone also keep that in mind. Like all you guys are at one, two ads and you're like, my ad's not working. I'm like, dude, fucking you have like seven more tries, bro. Like keep rocking. Let's keep moving. Like you need to keep just testing. It took uh, me four months. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like you, how many did you do? You had somewhere like five or six, right? Yeah. Something like that. Uh, probably more than that, to be honest, like close to eight, like eight to 10 over the span of like four months and then really, really cracked it. And now oh, I've tested now I haven't touched it in like six, seven months. It just, it just prints. Yeah. It, it, it's almost like saying like, like, like it's obviously like, it's not, this is not a hard rule, but it's almost like, just think that your first five ads are going to do nothing. And it's kind of like what Jeremy says, inputs over outcomes. Like if you know your first five ads won't do anything, don't worry about the outcome and just keep testing, then you'll be fine. But, but back to like what worked for me and what didn't. So yeah. my first few ads were doing like, okay, pretty good. Um, until my, my, one of my ads did really good, kind of. It was at a 6X ROAS, right? Which is like, oh my God, 6X, which is which was high. But my show up percentage, so a, amount of people who showed up to booked appointments was like 45 to 50%, which is very bad. And my closing percentage was between 20 and 25%, which in the industry is good. But in Summit Acquisition Land, that's actually really fucking horrible because we <laughs> play at a higher level. So, and I knew that. And I was like, hey, I know my ROAS is good, but I'm getting fucking beat up, right? And yeah. you told me kind of a similar story that happened with you. So I was like, okay, I need to fix something. And so the difference was I was going after people who needed to be saved rather than going after people who were already winning and wanted more. So my first ad was like independent hip hop artists. This is why you're stuck. And now my ad, I don't even call out a person actually, which is quite different. I just say, are you looking or like, you know, have you ever wanted to produce your own music and live out your dream of being an independent hip hop artist? It's more playing on what they're desiring and like kind of their goal. And I don't, I mean, I still get some people who are financially disqualified. It totally happens, but my Show up percentage last month was 80% and my closing percentage was 38% with 16K cash collected. It's pretty fucking nice. And the overall ROAS is about 4X. So it's not 6X, but it's like, dude, it's a nice clean 4X. It's really scalable. So yeah. Yeah. I would say that that that's what it was. Solid. And <clears throat> it is funny, man. This This makes me laugh every time I hear it. Because like you said, our standards inside the community are so damn high where it's yeah. like a four X, a six X is like bad. Yeah. But then in reality, I know so many people like just from being in like the advertising space for like literally like four or five years, 
people would kill for four X row as people would kill for a three. Yeah. And it's funny. Like I was talking to a client uh, last week as well, just before flying out to Mexico. And he's like, Hey, like my ads aren't working. And like, I don't know what's wrong. I'm like, okay, like, what are your numbers? Like how much did you spend? How much did you made in the last 30 days? What's your row ass? Like, Oh, it's, it's an eight. I'm like, oh, brother, it's, it's not an ad problem. It's a you problem. Like, crank the budget <laughs> and uh it, it's crazy like it, i don't know man like for me it seems so obvious to like just run more at like just run ads because it's, it's so consistent and predictable and like you want more clients next month okay double your budget right it's, it's like inputs lead to outputs pure cause and effect and like, that's really hard to do with any other out, like any other medium or outlet as well, like, a, and whatnot, because this is like, it's very linear. And of course, like ROAS does kind of diminish. It does decrease at scale. Like when you're spending like a grand a day plus, yeah. it does start to drop a little bit, no doubt. But even still, like you can turn a dollar into three, like you're laughing, you know? Yeah. Um, so I, mean, I think it's, yeah. Yeah. It's like, if you turn 1K into 3K, and you do that every day. It's like, you're not going to boohoo about, oh, it's just a three X. It's like, yeah, yeah. But, like that's a pretty big profit. Yeah. And then turn that and then so the 2K profit, dump that back in as next month, turn that two into six. And then now you got 4K profit, dump that. Like that's how you scale. Right. And a lot of people, like one of the questions I get from prospects all the time is like, how much should I start spending on ads at the start? How much budget do I need? Mm. I'm like, well, enough to start seeing results. Like, the more you put in, the more you get out for sure. But we also don't have to empty our bank accounts right away because we need to establish proof of concept and we need to <laughs> test a whole bunch of different angles, a whole bunch of different variations and hooks and stuff like that. But once we do find it, then we scale the piss out of it, right? And then just like really double down and and then you're you're off, you're laughing. Um, but even like with where you're at right now, because you just kind of changed to the current ad you're running right now about a month ago, right? And like it was, it was yeah. last month. And what I've seen, and this kind of follows what I, I talk about a lot inside the program, the 30 day rule, where it's like, on average, and I, I got this from Fanatical Prospect, and it's a great book. I read, I remember reading this in my parents' basement like four years ago. And uh, the one thing I, I took from it was the 30 day rule, which says the marketing activities that you do today, you won't actually see the true effect of them for at least 30 to 90 days out. So you're just creeping up on that right now. And I think mm. you're in such like, to be able to get a forex ROAS that quickly, like think about all the people that are now in your ecosystem that joined over the last 30 days that are going to start converting now. Most of my prospects, they don't convert on day one or week one. Like last week, bro, we were on a yacht. I had a 15K day on a yacht. And, and this dude, DM closed 10K, who followed me or came from one of my ads like three weeks prior. Hit him up, had a conversation, super dry, super cold, one word answers, not much substance there. And then left me on red. Mm. Two weeks later, hey, bro, I've been binging your YouTube videos. And then he started qualifying me. He's like, hey, here's my background. Here's kind of what I'm doing. Here's what I've done before. Like, am I a good fit? Can I join the program? I'm ready to piff. And then piff in the yacht, which is crazy. And, mm -hmm. uh, but that just goes to show. It's like, with anything, you have to give it time. And with time comes the compound effect. So I think you're you're right at the like right at the start of massive hockey stick growth. Like you're yep. right at the third the like day 30. So I think like the mm -hmm. next 60 days for you, a lot of those people are gonna start really converting now. You're gonna keep pumping your audience with more new people every single day, too. But then the, the existing people in there are going to start to convert as well. Um, so I, th I think you're in a really good place. And yeah. I, I truly think that Forex ROAS is, is going to significantly increase as well. I could not agree more. So many things, like a couple of things that I want to respond to in there mm -hmm. is what you said. So um, I always thought it was like a dollar amount of like, okay, I should spend this much on the ad. And that's super the wrong way to think about it. I know most people think about it. Yeah. But 
I thought about it as like, okay, my thing was a thousand dollars. Most people's are like two fifty or five hundred. I'm like, no, I need to get to at least a thousand bucks. So, on my current winning ad, the day I hit one k of ad spend, I still had gotten zero clients, and I was like, shit, I don't know, should I cut the ad off? But I don't know what, I, I don't know what, told me to keep going. I just like, no, just go a little more. Yeah, three k. Said, hmm, at eleven hundred. Right. That's a hundred dollars past what I had told myself. I was like, okay, interesting. Let's keep running it. And you use the word time horizon a lot. I love that phrase and that idea. And it's funny because like we look at like 14 days, 30 days, 60 days. Like most people don't even look at 90 days. And it's funny because of what you just like, this is almost like a coaching call. Because of what you just said to me, I, I'm sitting here going, maybe the time horizon for this ad is like 180 days. Like maybe it's like a six month thing. Like maybe this ad doesn't even take off for another six months because of what you just said. Like maybe I start running retargeting ads. I don't know. And another thing with scaling, this ad was at 50 a day. And then I went to 70 and then 100 and then 200 a day. All of that within two weeks. That's scaling. <laughs> so- Hell of an identity shift. And by the way, I was running 200 a day when I had like 3K in my bank account. I didn't even have 6K for 30 days of ads. I was at 200 a day because you're just like, you told me to. <laughs> you're like, well, do you hate money? <laughs> Our favorite phrase, do you hate money? I'm like, I, I kind of like money. I'm going to keep going. <laughs> and uh, I'm just, honestly, I'm just kind of staying consistent at 200 a day right now. Kind of cleaning stuff up. But when you scale, you got to get ready for an identity shift. And to be honest with you, like for anyone listening, uh, there's a lot of fear that goes into spending that much money. And you just got to say, fuck the fear and, uh, you know, be ready to live under that bridge if it comes to it. Like, you know, not that that's ever going to be that way. But for me, I was like, I'm so fucking afraid. I'm not even worthy to spend 200 a day. I'm not that. But you, but Jeremy told mm -hmm. me to. I was like, I'm just going to fuck it. Like, I'm just going to listen to Jeremy and just do it. So with the scaling thing, you guys just got to have that mindset of like, I, I got to get it by any means. Just do it. I love that, man. I remember when I was spending like $30 a day when I first started, it terrified me <laughs> because I've spent a lot of money, a lot of other people's money. But uh, okay. I was coming out of my account for the first time when I launched this offer. That was a whole different story. And I remember like I got to the point where I was spending a hundred bucks a day and I set my billing threshold on Facebook. So it would charge my card every hundred dollars. So it would charge my card once a day. And so I get a notification. And then over time, it started to sting a little bit less. And exactly what you said, it's like, fuck the fear. Because what that is, is like, that's your current self keeping you at your current level. And if you want to elevate to that next level, well, guess what? New levels, new devils. It's usually the scariest thing the thing that just is the most uncomfortable that just like makes us cringe the most when we think of it, it's that thing we just need to lean into and do in order to break through, break through, break free to that next level. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's powerful, man. Very powerful. The new levels, new devils. I never heard that before. That's a gem. I, I was going to grab my essay notebook, but we have a recording. I'm gonna write that one in there. Like that, that's a, <laughs> that's a major gem. Major gem. You, let me ask you this, bro. I mean, I know you're interviewing me, but fuck it. Go for it, bro. Let's go. Now, I want to ask you. So like now I'm in the phase, right? I'm at like 16K, 20K, whatever. Yeah. And like, I'm trying to take it there to the moon. Uh, I will say, let's just say my next phase. Well, I don't even know what my next step is, but monetarily, I don't really care. I know it's leadership, right? Systems, um, things of that nature. So yeah, I mean, what would you fucking tell me to do now? Like I'm at 16 K I'm still doing two, 200 a day. I've got a setter who's awesome. Yeah. And, uh, I think the biggest challenge I've had is just kind of my time. It's very difficult for me to like do everything, create contents really tough. Uh, just kind of give me your sense of like what you feel like I should do now. Yeah. Great question. So kind of like what we talked about last week at the retreat, it's going to be a matter of like, it's kind of like two sided a scaling until it breaks until you hit your pain line and start to kind of like get burnt out. 
And once you kind of notice you're coming up to that point, it's like the thing is going to identify itself as to what you need to work on and fix then and there. Because right now you can like, you can kind of foresee it a little bit too. It's like, okay. Like for example, last, like back in August when I did 220 K it was very clear as my back end that was going to be broken. So then I'm like, okay, I got to pump the brakes a bit. Otherwise, like if I keep this up for another month or two, cause I was signing a client every single day. It was nuts. You saw it in the community. It was crazy. Yeah, it was. Crazy. And it's just me coaching. It's just me on the back end. Like I'm basically a one man show, which is insane. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, that's my next move. I need to build real systems and actually build a bit of a team as well to help me with that. And a big thing that I got from one of my new mentors, uh, Dan, because I, I hired a couple of guys, Dan and then Alex to help me do that, um, to kind of get to that next level was like, when you have new opportunity, like when you make new sales, sign new clients, it shouldn't be more painful for me. Each new client shouldn't add to my workload because it got to the point where I was like, I don't want to sign any more clients right now. I literally was like turning people away. I had to increase my prices and stuff like that. So I wasn't really like, I couldn't foresee that like the month prior, I had no idea that was going to happen. Right. But once it kind of got to that point, I was like, okay, now I need to fix this. So I like for where you're at right now, I think like probably the next thing that's going to break. And a lot of the time it is like just the back end. You're going to be signing too many clients. And then it might go because like you've been doing some split pays too. Like your offers 3K, sometimes letting guys in for like 1K up front, right? So you're collecting less cash up front and then more volume of clients coming in too. So the volume might start to become a little, little bit of a burden for you. So mm -hmm. then I would really just kind of ask yourself like, okay, how can I build a program, the course in a way that really offloads a lot of that operational like kind of complexity and um, operational drag, how can I build a better program? And like with the new uh, new modules in the program about delivery and fulfillment, I kind of cover my uh, process on that. But essentially it's like, how can you get better results in a short amount of time with less of your time and energy? And when you rebuild the program in a way, it's like I build my, rebuild mine three, four times at this point. Each time I ask myself that question. So I think that's kind of probably going to come up next. Um, I don't think you're quite there yet, but I would just kind of like start to be very aware as you're working with clients, as you're coaching them, as you're signing them up. So, okay, how can I systemize things? Can you, can you eliminate certain things you're doing that aren't absolutely critical? If not, can you automate them? If not, can you delegate them? I know you just hired an appointment setter recently. So you delegated that. Amazing. Now you just bought back some of your time. Next up, it's probably going to be like onboarding calls or coaching calls. So maybe you bring on a client success manager to help you with that, carry some of the burden there, right? So most of the time it is like a bit of a backend thing that breaks when you're scaling um, because you're assigned too many clients where you only have so much time of the day to coach, to respond to Slack, to hop on calls, onboard new clients, blah, blah, blah. And then also to like wear all the other hats in the business too. So from here, it's just gonna be a matter of like adding leverage to specific areas in your business that kind of like start to poke a little bit of pain, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. Super helpful. Um, yeah, we're actually pretty aligned <clears throat> in that, in terms of like client success. I, I also agree with you on that. Um, I was going to ask you too, like, do you think price point, how much do you think price point has to do with the type of client you bring in. There's always going to be exceptions and outliers. I found for myself personally, the more I pay, the more I pay attention. So like last week, I'd spend like 25 K on new coaches. I'm very bought in. <laughs> I'm doing what they say. But if I buy like a, if I spend like a thousand bucks, that's like, at this point, it's like, bro, you spent a lot more than that on, champagne that we dumped on the floor last weekend like, <laughs> i'm not yes. gonna be very bought in right <laughs> so um now obviously that it's relative depending on who you're, you're speaking to because like with you it's like at the start you weren't very bought in but it was relative because for you it was a lot 
at where you were at, yeah. right? Um, if it was somebody else, like I've got clients like not, literally just before hopping on with you, it's like they're doing a couple hundred grand a month. So to them, it's like not that much <laughs> relatively. So it's a little bit different um, depending on kind of where things are at. But I do think that like, just from my experience, the more I pay, the more I pay attention, the more financially bought in I am, the more emotionally bought in and committed I am too. Um, and I think that's pretty universal too. You're going to have the outliers. You're going to have exceptions where people like you just like take it and just run with it and then get results. But I found it's like pretty like few and far between. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, do you think that one of the things that I'm noticing with my program with the, like my clients mm -hmm. is it's also really few of them that hold themselves accountable. Yeah. It's starting to feel like I got to do a lot of babysitting. And so like I made this thing like a check, kind of a check in form based on kind of how you're doing things, but like just that idea. And I want to implement it and put the pressure on them, but I don't know if it's the right type of people. Like, don't you, I, I feel like you have a rule. I don't want to say it if it's wrong. I just remember you saying something like if you miss a check in a specific amount of times, you're out. Okay. So can you say what that is? I don't want to say it wrong, <laughs> what the rule is. I haven't missed the check-in, but yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, for me as a coach, it's like, it's hard for me to, to help my clients if I don't know where they're at. So if they miss the check-in, then I, I don't know where they're at, where they're, where they're feeling stuck or anything like that. Right. So to me, if somebody's not doing that, if they're not filling out a, like a form, checking form every single week, then like that tells me it's like, they're not even committed to themselves. And they're just going to waste my time, right? Like just because you buy a program, just because you invest a bunch of money, it does not mean you're entitled to the results. That's that's only the start. Then you got to show up and actually do the work. That's a whole different ball game, right? So I do think that like a lot of people do really need accountability. Um, me personally, I'm very self-motivated and like self-driven. I don't, um, but not everybody's like me. Some people do need that kick in the ass, right? They do need you know, like kind of push them down the line so they can actually like kind of get out of their own way and do it. So that's where, that's where a client success manager could really come into play because then you won't have to do that. And that's kind of like what I'm working on right now. I've got a few interviews this week with potential client success managers to bring onto my team to kind of like handle the accountability side of things to progress people from point A to point B in my program a lot sooner and a lot quicker and a lot smoother. And like, at the end of the day, people like to feel like they're cared for, right? And if they, they join the program, and they feel like you don't really care about them, then like, it's going to put a negative taste in their mouth. So I do think it's a little bit different for everybody. That is something you could always just ask your clients. It's like, hey, would this be helpful for you? Would you actually use it? And would it actually like significantly provide a lot more value? Yes or no? Because like, maybe they just want to learn how to make beats and like kind of do it at their own pace. That's mm -hmm. fine. Right. Some people are going to be like that. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's really helpful. I, I think you gave me a lot of clarity on the clarity on that for sure. Awesome. I, I love how this, uh, I love how this call is gone, man. Like it's just been, so I knew I was going to finesse it to a coaching call. I knew from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. So I, I love talking about this stuff, man. Like it, to me, this is, this is fun. Um, especially because I know like you're just going to take it and run with it. And yeah, hundred percent. It's also gonna be super helpful for anybody else that's watching too, um, which is like what I aim for um, with my YouTube stuff too. So um, that's awesome. But uh, to, like, I, I don't want to keep you here forever. <laughs> um, to, you could if you wanted, but it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> um, before we kind of wrap things up, man, what's kind of been like the biggest takeaway for you? Like, um, the biggest key insight, revelation, and then also kind of following up on that as well. What would you tell Lee from like four months ago? Well, that's a hard one. Like this key revelation. I, I've had a lot. Damn, it's so hard. I've had so many revelations here. Or what was like the most value that you, that you got from the program? Hmm. Like the thing that like, uh, I got to say two control. things. All right. Yeah, I'll say two. I got to say two. One of them is like the actual information that you're putting together, like 
your strategy for client acquisition for coaches is fucking good. It's great. It's the best. Like the way you do things is the simplicity. So there it is. It's the simplicity. It's that you've helped all of us build such a simple business. You know, there's a lot of moving parts, which is normal. But like the way we get clients, the way we run ads, like it's really, really simple. It's like, oh, I don't need to, I don't have a website, bro. Like what? People ask me for that all the time. Sometimes on sales calls, they ask me, I'm like, listen, dude, I have like 20 clients and I don't have a website. So you'll be the first one who needs one. Like I say that all the time to people. And I'm like, go check my Instagram. Like it's super easy. Uh, so yeah, I would say simplicity. Um, yeah. Four months ago, Lee, what I would have told myself was, yeah, I, honestly, yeah, I would, I would tell him, dumb it down. You're making it too hard. You're overthinking. You're spending your time on things that you don't need to spend your time on. That's really more like six or eight months ago, Lee, too. Four mm. months ago, I was starting to get dialed because I was messing with you. Uh, I'll say before I met you, yeah, I just was like doing a bunch of things that weren't important. Like you only need to do things that either make you money or fulfill your clients. That's it. So if it doesn't make you money, if it doesn't feel, fulfill your clients, then you should just, you just shouldn't do it. Just don't go do something else with your time. Go contemplate life. Um, so I'd say the biggest revelation is business is simple to understand, but difficult to execute. Very well said. Very well said. Simple, not easy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, where can people find you, Lee? Go on Instagram, Leezy the Gifted, all one word. Uh, Instagram and YouTube are the best places and Spotify or Apple Music if you want to check out some of the music I put out. Um, you know, if you need something to work out to, you need to you need to hit those few extra pull-ups. I'm your guy for that. That's the songs you want to hear. So Leezy the Gifted, all one word, no dots, dashes, or underscores. Amazing, man. Well, hey, appreciate you coming on the channel, man. And uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to be a part of your journey, part of your success so far. I know we're literally just getting started and we're just getting warmed up. It's going to be very cool to see where you're at 12 months from here. And it's going to be insane um, at the next client retreat as well. Um, to be like, to, to be completely honest with you, man, I don't know how we're going to top this one, but I, I will say, I will say I do love a challenge. So I'm looking Ooh, forward. That's to exciting. It. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Jay. Thanks for this opportunity, bro. This has been great. When I watched Chase and Alex and Steph and Andrea, I was like, mm-hmm. bro, I'm going to be on one of these YouTube videos. So this is crazy that I'm on one. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Well, hey, man, I really appreciate you. Thanks for coming on. And uh, if you have been uh, watching this video, you've gotten some value and you're looking to really level up and take things to the next level in your coaching business, um, you know what to do. Shoot me a message on Instagram, link in the description if you need to book in a call as well. But uh, yeah, if you're doing usually at least 5K a month, like I don't work with total beginners anymore, uh, um, I can definitely help you out and we'll build some real systems so you can start scaling up and making some big boy money. And uh, one last thing I'll say is on the plane ride coming home a couple of days ago, I was kind of, I was looking at one of the photos of our whole crew. Like there was uh, 19 of us there. And the previous month from the 19 of us, uh, I think we did about 750,000 cash between all of us, which is insane. Wow. Um, so yeah, Shit. I think a uh, in a month. Yeah. Which, which is crazy when you think about it. Cause like most of us are in like our twenties and like a couple of like early thirties and then Tom like 48, but like that really put things into perspective for me. I was like, Holy cow. And that's only 20% of the community too. Like, there's multiple other guys that are doing 50, 100 K a month plus. And uh, it's really cool to see that. So, um, and it's going to be even cooler to see where everybody's going to be at in the next one. So yeah. that said, to wrap things up guys. Um, yeah. If you want to learn more about the process program and all that, check out the main video pinned to my YouTube channel, breaks down everything. And then, uh, yeah, you can shoot me a DM on Instagram, Jeremy underscore Pogue. If you need the payment link, you can just DM close and a little piffy. Um, and then, uh, but if you absolutely need a call, if you want to chat with me and, and whatnot, then uh, feel free to book in down below in the description. But aside from that, Lee, thanks again, man. Appreciate you a lot, brother. 
And uh, yeah, see you guys next video. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Of course.